hello and welcome to this affinity photo tutorial now this originally was going to be an adaptation of a digital camera magazine photoshop tutorial which was four creative ways to use blur in your images but i also wanted to remake a video from 2017 which looked at motion blur so i thought i'd tack that on the end and make this a five creative ways to use blur now have you gone to the, all the trouble of taking a nice crisp in focus image you may wonder why you want to then add blur it's just sort of to add a bit of creativity to the image so it's down to personal taste whether you want to do this or not so first things first I'm going to duplicate this layer you can do it by right clicking on the layer come to duplicate or you can use control plus J or command plus J um, and this first method I'm just going to rename this so I can keep a track on this and this is going to give a diffuse glow sort of effect so with this layer here I'm going to add an adjustment layer and that is going to be a black and white adjustment layer and I'm not going to make any alterations I'm just going to merge that down to make this a black and white image then I'm going to add a live filter now you could just use a normal filter uh, from the filters menu but that is destructive and once you've added it you can't sort of go back using a live filter you can sort of come back to it and tinker with it if you so wish so the live filter is this sort of um, two triangles on top of each other you click on that and it will give you the live filters menu and the one we want to use is Gaussian Blur and we're going to move this up to about 10 pixels for now you could either type in 10 or just get a rough idea because it's very hard to get an exact figure just using the slider and it, as you can see, hopefully you can see here on the edge it is starting to sort of break up around the edges now what you need to do here is put a tick into the preserve alpha and then that will bring those edges back to being okay let me just then close that now we're now going to change the blend mode of this to either overlay or soft light it depends on your personal taste sort of overlay is a bit harsher and soft light is obviously a bit softer um, I'm going to go with the overlay option for now and if I open this live filter again I can sort of now I can see what the effect is you can move this to your personal taste which is something you couldn't do if you just used the filters so I mean for me personally it's going to be in and around that 10 pixel point so let me just put this on it's almost on 13 so if I shut that down and if I turn this little group on and off that was the original and now we've got this sort of black and white diffused glow effect I mean you could have possibly left it in colour but this is how they did it in the Photoshop tutorial so I'll just click and drag this below and then I'll come back to the background image and I'm going to duplicate this again and this one is going to be uh, lens baby 
effect. Now, a lens baby is, as I understand it, is is a specialised lens, whereby a certain part of the image will be clear and crisp, and the the all that area outside will be blurred. So to get this effect, I'm going to use the elliptical marquee tool which is one of the marquee tools in this menu up here on the left and I'm going to bring the cursor to the sort of point where I want it to be sharp which is obviously this gentleman at the end of the tunnel here and I'm going to hold down the shift key just so it sort of starts making the circle from the center point that I've selected and to get to the size that I want it to be. Now, if you want your particular image, you don't necessarily want a circle. At this point, if I let go of the shift key but still hold down the left mouse button, I have still got that option, but it's still sort of centered from where I started from. So I'm going to make this slightly more oval than round and then let go of the left mouse button and that will give me the shape that I want. Now I want this sort of selection to be inverted. There are a number of ways of doing this. Um, you can come up to the select menu and you can do invert pixel selection or you can use Control, Shift and I but you can also use these icons up here and just click on this one which is Invert Selection so now this outside area is the area that is being selected and then I'm going to refine this selection and as you can see this area in the middle is red because that is the area that has not been selected and I'm going to increase the feather on this quite high and you can see that is now becoming a less sort of sharp edge let's go right up to a hundred and see what that's like yes yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on a hundred and I'm going to leave the output on selection and just click apply. So we still just got our selection area. And then again I'm going to add a live filter. And this time we're going to go for radial blur. And most like the previous one we're going to click on preserve alpha. And I'm going to raise this to roughly about two pixels for now hopefully you can see that effect that is having and I'll just close that for now and I now don't need the selection area so I can could press control plus D or again just use the icon up here and click deselect now this is basically the effect that I was after I could go back and open the adjustment and tinker a bit more with the radial blur but I'm quite happy with how that is at the moment you could also add a black and white adjustment um, if you like this in black and white and then sort of tinker with whatever setting suits your particular image yeah so and you could also you know, move this inside and make it a child of the overall group if you prefer in black and white or you could prefer you know in color whichever one 
suits your personal taste. I mean, you might also want to maybe add a levels adjustment as well, just to sort of highlight that effect. A lot of it depends on your image and what you're trying to do. So, let me just turn that on and off. That was the original. And that is now the finished result. So I'm just going to click and lower this below. Highlight this layer again. Duplicate it. And this time we're going to make a sort of tilt shift effect. And again we are going to be using the live filters rather than the filters at the top because you can sort of tinker with it a bit later. So with the tilt shift effect we are going to sort of make a certain area in focus and the area outside sort of gradually getting out of focus. Um, so again come to the live filters and but this is it's actually called depth of field so I'm going to click on that filter now it starts out in the elliptical mode and you could use this or you could what I'm going to use is the tilt shift effect which is horizontal lines now again we're going to tick on preserve alpha not 100% certain why they don't make that the default and then you'd have to then turn it off because I think most people would use default uh, preserve alpha so you click and drag the center node here and put it over the area that you want to be in focus which will be this central line area here and then you have these lines above and below now what happens here is this central area is like sharp and then from this line to this line and that line to that line the blur will gradually go from being sharp to being blurred and anything above that line will be blurred and below that line will be blurred so now it's very sensitive this if I click and drag this uh, bottom node it is very easy to sort of make this tilt so if you hold down the shift key that will keep it straight and you can't sort of tilt it so I'm going to position the top and bottom nodes so I know that I want this area here to be like fully blurred and this area here to be fully blurred and the bits in between will be gradually blurred so once the outsides are set I can now sort of reset the central ones and I'll just come just below his feet and just at the top of that archway there I will let go of the shift key now and now I've sort of got this roughly where I think I want it to be I can always come you know I can always tinker with it later I'm going to then alter the radius and I'm going to raise this to about 10 or 11 pixels oh, blimey. Yeah, actually on a whole pixel there 11 pixels so as you can see here hopefully this is the sharp area this gradually gets blurred as it goes up to, and then it's all fully blurred in this area and similarly this way gradually gets blurred and then it's fully blurred down here now you do have other sliders here the clarity will increase the clarity of just this central area 
Um, so you could sort of really overcook it, but I'm just going to increase this probably about one pixel. And you can also sort of add a vibrancy to that central area. Uh, on this particular picture it's having no real effect so I'm not going to bother with it. And then I'll close that down. And then hopefully you can see this, how it gradually blurs in this direction and gradually blurs out from that center. But that center point remains nice and clear. So I'll click and drag this below, highlight this one, duplicate it, and this one is going to be the basic Alton effect. Now, to get the Alton effect properly, there's a lot of steps. This is just it's a, it's a variation on the default diffuse glow option um, and it is like it says a very basic version so what we'll get, we're going to again add a live filter and much like the diffuse glow it's going to be Gaussian blur again preserve alpha and set the blur at roughly 10 pixels that's close enough and then I'm going to reduce the opacity down to zero and I'm just going to bring it up probably somewhere between 10 10 and 25 pixels I'm going to go with 25 on this particular occasion and that would be sort of like the effect just got as a slight glow sort of going on now on my particular image here it has sort of also made a sort of a blurred area over the person which I want to be sort of more in focus so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paint onto this live filter um, because it has a layer mask already attached. So I'm going to get the paintbrush, make sure black is my colour and let's set the opacity down I don't know, around about the 20% mark. Um, reduce hardness down to zero and I'm just going to paint over this chap let me just reduce the size of that brush just so I'm only painting over him I assume it's a him anyway and then if I turn that Yeah, so I, think I personally like that better where he is now more the most in focus thing in that effect. And that is the four different blurs that they used in the Photoshop tutorial. So now moving on to the remake of my 2017 video and this is using motion blur this image again comes from pixabay.com and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it because I don't want all this area up here mainly so I'm going to bring this down to that bar that goes across there and I'm also going to bring this area up to the bottom so I've just got that bottom sort of weight to this lift and um, I might just also just 
straighten this up a bit. I'm also going to move these areas in a little bit and make them roughly about the same distance from this bottom guiding line here and the bottom of that line there and then double click to make the crop I'm also going to come to document and flatten so I've now sort of made that crop permanent so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer using the right click again you could use Control and J or Command and J and I'm going to use the live filter and motion blur now you can set the rotation of the blur so at the moment it's this blue line it tells you that if I add the blur it's going to be going sort of left to right I want this to be going up and down so I'm going to put it on 90 degrees you could have it on 270 but 90 and 270 the, the same effect and I'm going to move the radius up to about 10 pixels 9.9 .9 is close enough again click on preserve alpha as you can see especially up here the sort of there is an effect happening that's not as noticeable as in the other picture but I'm going to click on preserve alpha um, so we now have this sort of effect of the lift moving but obviously I want this area here to be clear because I want to be able to see the people in the lift so much like before I'm going to paint on the mask of the filter so get my paintbrush black is the color that I want we'll start with a lowish opacity so it's, it's still set on 21 and I'm going to increase the brush size with the square brackets and then just paint on this lift just to get all the people in it nice and clear still and I will also get the weight of the lift or the motor or whatever that bit is it's at the bottom and a bit at the top as much as I want to do there so now I could also do the lift on the other side but I'm going to leave that for now so I'm fairly happy with that I've got the motion blur to give the effect that this lift is moving fast but you've highlighted your camera on the lift and the shutter speed has sort of made that clear where the rest of it is giving you the motion blur so basically that is it um, it's just a case now of saving your particular image exporting it giving it a new name and that is the end of this look at using blur to give you some creative effects so thank you for watching and goodbye